Would you like to make a podcast? Spotify has a way to let you make one easily, distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place, for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit right from your phone or computer, so you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify, and everywhere else, podcasts are heard. And video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free. You know, ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I've enjoyed sharing my favorite stories with children around the world. If you've ever thought of starting your own podcast, download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. The Emperor's New Clothes by Hans Christian Andersen Many, many years ago, lived an emperor who thought so much of new clothes that he spent all of his money in order to obtain them. His only ambition was to always be well-dressed. He did not care for his soldiers, and going to the theater did not interest him. The only thing he wanted to do was go out and show off new clothes as often as possible. He even had a new coat for every hour of the day. The great city where he lived was a very busy place. Every day many strangers from all parts of the globe arrived. One day two swindlers came to the city and pretended to everyone that they were master weavers. They said they could make the finest clothes anyone could imagine. They said their colors and patterns were not only beautiful, but made of a special material, invisible to any person who was extraordinarily simple in character. That must be a wonderful cloth, thought the emperor. If I had such a suit, I might find out what men in my realms are unfit for their office, and also be able to distinguish the wise from the foolish. I must have them so for me, without delay, and he gave a large sum of money to the swindlers in advance, so that they would get to work immediately. The swindlers set up two looms and pretended to work very hard. They asked for the finest silk and the most precious gold cloth. All the expensive material they received they hid away for themselves and worked at the empty looms till late at night. I would love to know how they're getting along with the cloth, thought the emperor, but he felt worried when he remembered that anyone who could not see it was simple. He thought for sure he would be able to see it, but decided to send someone else first to check it out, just in case. I shall send my honest old minister to the weavers, thought the emperor. He can see how it looks, for he is very clever. The good old minister went to the room where the swindlers sat before empty looms. Goodness gracious, he thought and opened his eyes wide. I cannot see anything at all. But he did not say so. Both swindlers told him to come near and asked him if he admired the lovely pattern and beautiful colors pointing to the looms. The poor old minister tried his very best, but he could see nothing, for there was nothing to see. Oh dear, he thought, can I be stupid? I would have never thought so, and nobody must find out. Is it possible that I am too stupid to do my job? No, I cannot admit that I was not able to see the cloth. Have you anything to say? said one of the swindlers, while he pretended to be busy weaving. Oh, it's very pretty, really beautiful, replied the old minister, looking through his glasses. What a beautiful pattern! What brilliant colors! I will tell the emperor that I like the garments very much. We're pleased to hear that, said the two weavers as they described to him the colors and explained the complex pattern. The old minister listened carefully so that he would be able to tell the emperor exactly what they said. Now the swindlers asked for more money, silk, and gold cloth, which they said was required for weaving, but they kept everything for themselves and not a thread went near the loom. But they continued as before to pretend to work at the empty looms. 
Soon afterwards, the emperor sent another good man to see the weavers and see how they were getting on and if the cloth was nearly finished. Like the old minister, he looked and looked, but he could see nothing, as there was nothing to be seen. Isn't it not a beautiful piece of cloth? asked the two swindlers, showing and explaining the fantastic pattern which, however, did not exist. I'm not simple, thought the man. Maybe I'm not clever enough for my job. I must not let anyone know. So he praised the cloth, which he did not see, and praised the beautiful colors and the fine pattern. It is very excellent, he communicated back to the emperor. Everybody in the whole town talked about the precious cloth. But at last the emperor wished to see it himself while it was still on the loom. With a number of assistants, including the two who had already been there, he went to see the two swindlers who were now hard at work, but without using any thread. "'Isn't it magnificent?' said the two older men who had been there before. "'Your majesty must admire the colors and the pattern.' And they pointed to the empty looms, for they expected that the others could see the cloth. "'What is this?' thought the emperor. I do not see anything at all. That is terrible. Am I simple? Too simple to be an emperor? That would indeed be the most terrible thing that could happen to me. Really, he said, turning to the weavers, your cloth is wonderful, really wonderful. He nodded cheerfully as he looked at the empty loom, because he did not want to say that he could not see anything. All his attendants who were with him looked and looked, and although they could not see anything more than the others, they said, like the emperor, It is very beautiful. And all advised him to wear the new magnificent clothes to the great procession which was soon to take place. It is magnificent, beautiful, excellent, they said. Everybody seemed to be delighted. The whole night, before the day on which the procession was to take place, the two swindlers pretended to work and burned more than sixteen candles. They wanted people to see that they were busy finishing the emperor's new clothes. They pretended to take clothes from the loom and worked about in the air with big scissors, and sewed with needles without using thread. At last they said, The emperor's new clothes are now ready. The emperor and his advisers came to the hall. The swindlers held their arms up, as if they held something in their hands, and said, These are the trousers, this is the coat, here is the cloak, and so on. They are all light as a cobweb, so light in fact, that it feels as if you have nothing on at all. But that is just the beauty of the clothes. Indeed, said all the assistants. But they could not see anything, for there was nothing to be seen. "'Does it please your majesty now to undress?' said the swindlers. "'That we may help your majesty in putting on the new suit in front of the mirror.' The emperor undressed, and the swindlers pretended to put the new suit on him, one piece after another. And the emperor looked at himself in the mirror, from all sides." How well they look! How well they fit! said all. What a beautiful pattern! What fine colors! That is a magnificent suit of clothes. It was announced that it was time to start the procession. I am ready, said the emperor. Does not my suit fit me wonderfully? Then he turned once more to the mirror, so that people would think he was admiring his clothes again. Now two boys were there to walk behind the emperor, to hold up the train that would otherwise trail behind him on the ground. They stretched their hands to the ground as if to lift the train up into the air, and pretended to hold something in their hands. They did not want people to know that they could not see or feel anything. The emperor marched in the procession under a beautiful canopy, and all who saw him from the street and out windows exclaimed, Indeed, the emperor's new suit is amazing. What a long train he has. How well it fits him. 
nobody wanted to admit they saw nothing, for then it would mean they were of simple mind. Never were the emperor's clothes more admired. At last a little boy spoke up. But he has nothing on. He's completely nude. Good heavens, I'm sorry about that, said the embarrassed father. He's just a simple boy who doesn't know any better. But soon the whole crowd was whispering what the child had said. He does not have anything on at all, cried the people, realizing the truth. The emperor suddenly realized they were right. But he thought to himself, Now I must keep pretending until the end, or I will look even more foolish. So the emperor tried to walk with even greater dignity, while the crowd laughed and teased him all the way to the end. Afterwards, the emperor sent his soldiers to arrest the two swindlers, but they had already fled the city with all the money and precious material. For the rest of his days, people joked about the time the emperor went for a parade with no clothes on, and he never lived it down. Mm -hmm.